Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button you don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings through Facebook Patreon Teespring Redbubble uh, anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you I appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all <laughs> Alright everybody, hail and welcome to today's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you again so much for tuning in and watching. Uh, today's video is going to be the subject that has been a suggestion from a lot of different folks here, not just on the YouTube channel, but on the Facebook page. Um, a lot of different folks that I know have, have asked me over time if I could do a video uh, about kind of the how to do a basic heathen ritual. Um, and I guess it's, it's, it's coming from an aspect of, you know, a lot of folks are coming into heathenry nowadays and they maybe just don't know where to start. Uh, it may seem like a really big, daunting thing uh, to get into the ritual aspect of, of heathenry. Um, and so maybe some people just feel slightly intimidated or they just don't know, they really don't know where to start. Um, and like I did before in a video about, you know, sacrifice, I feel that the nature of, of sacrifice and what we do in our rituals, um, the spirit behind it, the nature behind it, the intent is much more important than the, you know, physical how to do this, that, or the other, you know. Um, but there are certain things, especially if you want to approach this from, you know, some historical uh, aspects, uh, there are some things of basic type, basic type uh, steps, uh, basic things that you would need. Um, and so that's what we're going to uh, kind of delve into a bit today. So hope you guys enjoy this video. Before we get started, we will go ahead and light our candle and burn some incense as is customary and tradition here on the channel. I think I'll burn incense first just so that way I don't have to reach over the flame of this candle and potentially light my hair on fire. That has actually nearly happened a couple of times. Never a fun occurrence. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So like I said, um, approaching this and, and looking at this with a bit of uh, interest of the hows, you know, how do I start my ritual? Uh, what do I need to perform my ritual? A lot of this is going to come uh, from sources that have historical backing, you know, stuff from the sagas, um, even in some of the Norse myths and poems. Um, so bear that in mind. Of course, we are modern heathens now, so some of the things that we mentioned or that I talk about uh, throughout this video may seem a bit impractical from a modern standpoint. For instance, we're going to be talking about the use of uh, fire, um, outdoor activities, um, even blood. Um, so there may be some nuances of this that just don't seem practical for you, and that's okay. We'll get into that towards the end of the video. Uh, so let's get into some of the, the items that you would need uh, to perform your, your solitary ritual, okay? We're not talking about a large group of, of folks necessarily, although this model um, can be used on a larger scale.
scale, but this is gonna pretty much kind of go into the things that you would need and how to do it for yourself. Um, if you just wanna do something solitary, okay? First thing you would need is your um, dedicated altar um, or you know, a space dedicated that is sacred. Um, it could be your in-home mantle or table that is dedicated for the gods and your ancestors, whatever. That sacred space outdoors, it would be the, the corger, you know, the, the, the kind of heap of stones or, or some sort of outdoor uh, space, uh, in the grove area. If you have the ability to do that, you could do that. Uh, the next thing you would want to have uh, is a bloat bowl, which is preferably made of wood and that is dedicated and used for nothing except your ritual. Okay, you wouldn't want to just get a you know a wooden salad bowl from your cabinet um, and reuse it for other things. You would want to have something dedicated specifically for your ritual. Okay. Um, the next item you would would look to have is some sort of a twig or sprig of a tree. Quite often you will see uh, examples of, of some sort of coniferous tree, whether it's a pine tree, a cedar tree, something like that, that has you know, like the needles off of the end of the branch. Uh, and you would have something like that. It's, I believe, called a hilt tain. And it's uh, basically just small enough, something for you to be able to dip into your uh, bloat bowl um, that is going to contain the liquids that are used for the ritual, okay? Um, the next item that you would typically want to have is something that will hold fire. Um, there are examples of like a sensor, you know, something that hangs, that, that carries, you know, uh, wood chips or oil and then is lit. Um, you can use candles um, or a torch even. Uh, so whatever is practical for you in your living spaces and, and however you're able to, to do that. You would want to have something that is able to hold and carry fire. Um, and there's a specific reason for that. We're going to get into that in, in, in sort of the steps or the how-tos or, or what to do to perform your ritual, okay? Um, and then lastly, you would want to have some sort of a plate, <clears throat> um, uh, some sort of an offering plate that actually contains and holds the offering or the gift, um, which is quite often food items that is used to gift to the holy powers, the, the, the whites or the Beitir of the homeland, the gods, your ancestors, that sort of thing. A plate that is uh, designed to carry the, the meal that you're sharing with the gods, okay? Um, oh, and I also meant to mention that uh, when it comes to the fire aspect of it, of course you're going to need something that starts your fire. So some people will use lighters, other people may want to use like a, 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 a like flint, stone or something to actually, you know, like steel wool or whatever and take, you know, something a little bit more traditional, but whatever. Obviously, you're going to need something to start a fire. Um, so now that you've got your items all set up and dedicated for the ritual, you will now want to kind of pre-game it a little bit, get your pre-ritual game on, so to speak. Um, and by that, you will put your offering, uh, which would be on your plate. Uh, so whatever those food items are, whatever whatever those things are that you're giving as the gift. It doesn't have to be food per se, but we're referring to this now. We're going to just use food items as the, for, for argument's sake, right? Uh, so you would want to put your food items, your, your offering, whatever it is, onto the altar, the holger, the, the whatever sacred space that you have dedicated for your ritual. Um, and then you, you also want to have your fire method ready. Uh, not specifically lit yet, but you want to have your your sensor ready, the fire starting method ready, your candle ready to go, that sort of thing, okay? And then you will want to have the liquids uh, in your bloat bowl uh, kind of next to the gifting uh, items, the items that you're gifting to the gods and the holy powers on your altar. Uh, and those liquids can be, of course, either blood or, or a lot of people will use uh, any sort of alcoholic beverages, wine, ale, mead, uh, cider, um, that sort of thing. And then uh, a lot of times you'll also want to have some sort of a, a physical representation of the gods, um, whether they are god poles, statues, wood carvings, um, bronze statues, anything that is a physical representation of the deities that you are going to be offering to. You want to have some sort of a physical representation of them there.
there um, for the process, all right? So now that you've got your items and now that you've gotten everything sort of preset and ready to go, um, you will now want to start your ritual. And the first thing that you would want that you would want to do is to create sacred space, literally create the sacred space. You already have your, your altar and all that set up, and now you're going to want to um, kind of sanctify or set aside that space as sacred, and that is where the fire comes into uh, in, in, into play. Um, an example of this can be seen in a lot of the different uh, stories of, of, of poems and sagas. One specifically that comes to mind is a uh, old Norse saga called uh, Landnamabok, which is the uh, it means land taking book um, and in that saga you will read about examples of um, space being set aside when taking land um, and, and walking around the perimeter or walking around the space that you are taking with fire so you carry your candle carry your sensor carry whatever your torch whatever it is your fire holding method and then in that way you are sanctifying or, or setting aside the space as sacred with the use of fire. Okay, so after you've set your sacred space and declared it as such, you want to then give some sort of a, a, a prayer or some sort of a verbal announcement to the gods, um, and they can be a, a, you know, a collection of the gods, the, the vatir of the land, the home, your ancestors, whatever of your choice. Um, it can be whoever you're trying to um, work with and, and, and offer to. Um, it's, it's a declaration that I'm here, this is a gift coming to you, that sort of thing. It, it doesn't have to be elaborate. It can be very simple. It can be something that you've written down ahead of time. It can be something that you just say off the cuff from your heart, as long as it's sincere, as long as it's you know, meant uh, with, with the truest of intent. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to even be pre-written, okay? But it can be, so it's, it's really just whatever suits you best. And again, like I said in the beginning of the video, it's the intent uh, behind it that matters the most. And now next what you'll want to do is, is the bloat process, the bloating process. This is where you have your bloat bowl and the third time the, 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 the staff of, of the twig of the tree and you will, um, with the liquid that has already been set in the bowl, whatever that liquid may be, um, you are going to dip the twig kind of in the bowl um, however many times you need to and Sprinkle the sacred space first. Sprinkle the god poles on your altar. Sprinkle the, uh, you know, the statues of the gods um, with the, the liquid that is in the blow bowl. You want to sprinkle the offering, um, whatever that is there, on, uh, on the sacred space, on the, on the altar, on your board, or whatever. You'll want to sprinkle that as well. Um, you would want to uh, sprinkle yourself, any, anybody else that may be with you. It's a small kind of collective thing, like I mentioned earlier, where you have more people there. You, the, the person would then, you know, sprinkle each uh, attendee there. Um, but again, if not, you would sprinkle yourself uh, with those items. Um, and like I said, if it's not blood, because again, we're getting into things that may just not be practical um, for use indoors or that sort of thing. You know, other things are fine as in terms of liquid. You can use mead, cider, ale wine, anything like that, that represents the, the giving of the blood, right? Or giving the blood process. Alright, so after you've done all that, your next steps would be the presentation of the offering, whatever it is that you have on there. Um, so whether you like live in an area where you can uh, slaughter and prepare your own livestock, your own animals, uh, or whether you go and buy it from the store, from the butcher, from the supermarket, whatever, um, this, this process, this offering is, you know, you're sharing a meal, you're sharing this gift with the gods, you know, so in, in what I typically have done is, is you save a portion of that meal and gift it to them. You will destroy it in some sort of ritualistic sense. You will bury it, you will bog it, you will burn it, um, and then not use it. Um, and in that, in that sense, you're, you're sending it off into the sacred uh, realms for them to partake of in that ritualistic form that then portion that you don't give to them is the portion that you eat. So that is you're sharing the gift with them in that sort of process, right? So yeah, you know, try to pick out really good pieces, you know, some good, good portions, uh, some of the best portions to give them. Um, and then once you've done that, once you've 
ritualistically done all that, you would then close the the ritual space. Uh, this is usually done through another sort of prayer or or, or dissertation of sorts, some sort of verbalization that gifting has been made and the vote is complete, the ritual is over, and you you know bid the, the holy powers that have become present with you um, safe journeys back to their respective realms. This kind of the thing that I do. Um, and having said that and having done that, you have completed and closed the ritual. At that point, you can leave uh, your sacred space. You can close back off and, you know, finish your meal uh, that you've offered with the gods, you know, that sort of thing. So, again, it's not a very elaborate process, but I think some people just may not know where to start. Where do I, where do I begin? You know, do I just show up? What do I say? What do I do? Um, so hopefully these steps and this process has provided you with some basis, uh, some somewhere to start. You know, um, I think that whatever personal touches that you would add to your ritual is is definitely welcome uh, by the by the powers that you are offering to, and again because of the intent behind it. Is this going to be the same way that everybody does it? No, of course not. Um, do a lot of people use this model? Sure, I'm one of them. Um, as an example, uh, it's, it's a good place to start. But again, you're, you're, the process may change for each offering that you give, uh, for each occasion. If there's something that involves more people, the, the, the dynamic may change just a bit slightly. Uh, you may come up with some things on your own as you grow and as you develop in your own heathen path. You may be you may come up with something that totally uh, takes out everything that we just that I just talked about and becomes something unique to you. Um, like I said, it, it's really more about the intent behind it. Um, but it, all the stuff that we went over here, there's there's um, sources that back up the whole you know uh, creating sacred space with fire. There, there's sources that back up that that was a thing that historical uh, you know heathens actually did. Um, the whole bloating thing with the twigs that we see that in Hawken the Good, the saga of Hawken the Good. Um, so there's a lot of sources out here that will back up this specific layout uh, for how to do a heathen ritual, and I hope that it's helped in guiding some folks here that were curious as to how and what to do. Um, so that is today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments section, and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your friends and become a subscriber today, guys. We're, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, during the intro, looking for 2,000 subscribers by or before the beginning of the year. We need at least three new subscribers every day. So be sure to share the videos around, uh, interact with them as much as you can because that helps the YouTube algorithm uh, figure out that it's content that should be shared around. Um, so next week's video, um, there will actually not be a live video going up on the Facebook page. Uh, I'm sorry for that because... Um, Next, next weekend here in the U.S. Is, is Labor Day weekend, and I actually have plans to be out of state, um, kind of enjoying some time off with uh, my family. So, um, there will be a video that goes up here on the channel uh, next Sunday. Um, it's going to be kind of a special one. I hope you guys like it. I already have it planned out, and just need to, just need to record it and get it ready. So, stay tuned next week for that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like I said, if you did, let me know what you think. Tell us down below in the comments what, uh, what your heathen ritual may be looking like if you so choose and want to share so everybody that's watching live on facebook stick around so i can read your uh, comments everybody up here watches on youtube thank you for your continued support hail and i'll see you in the next video